Hi, my name is Olivia Russell. And mine is Gabriella Camilleri. And today we're going to be talking to you about the Sacro Sanctum Concilium, which is the constitution of the sacred liturgy. It is one of the constitutions of the Second Vatican Council. The main aim was to achieve greater lay participation in the Catholic Church's liturgy. The title is taken from the opening lines of the document and means the Sacred Council. So we took a few points that we thought were interesting and made sense to us. So from the first part of it, we thought that God who wills that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, who in many and various ways spoken times passed to the fathers by the prophets. When the fullness of time had come, stepped his son, the word made flesh, anointed by the Holy Spirit to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal a contrite of heart, to be a bodily and spiritual medicine, the mediator between God and man. So what I took from, was, well, from this was that God is truly man and truly divine, meaning that he is not only human, but he's not only God, that he's both body and soul in us, especially when we receive the body and blood of Christ. For his humanity united with the person of the world, of the word, was the instrument of our salvation. Therefore, in Christ, the perfect achievement of our reconciliation came forth, and the fullness of divine worship was given to us. To accomplish so great a work, Christ is always present in his church, especially in her Litur liturgical celebrations. The sacred liturgy does not exhaust the entire activity of the church. Before men can come to the liturgy, they must be called to the faith and to the conversion. In quote, how then, they, how then are they to call upon him in whom they have not yet believed? But how are they to believe him who they have not heard? And how are they to hear if no one preaches? And how are men to preach unless they have been sent? So what I took from that was that a lot of people do not believe in him because that we can't hear him or see him but as Catholics we believe that when we talk to him through prayer that we he hears our voices he answers our prayers and he believes in us believers also the church must ever preach faith and penance she must prepare them for the sacraments teach them to observe all that Christ has commanded and invite them all to the works of charity piety and the apostolate the Paschal Sacraments also means to be one in holiness, so when we receive the sacraments, we are blessed and part of the church with Christ. His is why we ask the Lord in the sacrifice of the Mass, that receiving the offering of the spiritual victim, he may fashion us for himself as the eternal gift. So from another part of the promotion of liturgical instruction and active participation, some of the information that we found interesting was in the restoration of promotion of the sacred liturgy, this full and active participation by all the people is to the aim to be considered before all else. The study of the sacred liturgy is to be ranked among the compulsory and major courses in seminaries and religious houses of studies. In the theological facilities, it is ranked among the principal courses. It is to be taught under the theological, historical, spiritual, pastoral, and judicial aspects. Moreover, other professors, while striving to expound the mystery of the Christ and the history of salvation from the angle proper to each of their own subjects. The reform of sacred liturgy, in order that the Christian people may more certainly derive an abundance of graces from the sacred liturgy, Holy Mother Church desires to undertake with great care a general restoration of liturgy itself. Some of the general norms are that sacred scripture is of the greatest importance in the celebration of the liturgy. For it is from scripture that lessons are read and explained in the homily and psalms are sung. The prayers collect and the liturgical songs are scriptural in their inspiration and their force. It is from the scriptures that actions and signs derive their meaning. Thus, to achieve the restoration, progress, and adaptation of the sacred liturgy, it is essential to promote the, that warm and living love for scripture to which the venerable tradition of both Eastern and Western rites give testimony. Um, so they teach us lesson, lessons, so that is why the liturgical books are to be revised as soon as possible. Experts are to be employed on the task, and bishops are to be consulted from various parts of the world. And the list... Um, point that we thought was inter interesting was from the promotion of pastoral liturgical action. For the promotion and restoration of the liturgy is rightly held to be a sign of the provincial disposition of God in our time as the movement of the Holy Spirit in his church. 
It is today a distinguishing mark of the Church's life, indeed of the holy tenure of contemporary religious thought and action. So overall, after reading this document, um, we found that it related a lot to our textbook and a lot of the discussions that we were doing in class due to discussion board posts by talking about the sacred liturgy and like what it means to us. So this gave me a lot of background information to what it is as well. From learning the sec uh, Second Vatican, Coun Vatican Council in high school, this gave me a little bit of a better understanding. Um, it definitely gave me a um, different di direction to what I thought it was and um, spoke clearly, more clearly to me. Okay, so thank you for listening. Have a great day. Goodbye.